thinking you are missing out because you are not doing all of the things that other people are doing will absolutely keep you from establishing traditions that actually fit your family and are perfect for you and your kids. Do you ever wonder, how am I going to make it through to bedtime? How will I make it to the weekend? Or how will I ever get through this long, hard season with my kids? If you're a mom, you've likely asked those questions over and over again. Hi, I'm Sarah Short. I'm a busy mom of five kids and after almost two decades of parenting and asking myself those same questions, I'm here to share with you some of the best ways to navigate through your days as a mom. From life with a newborn to toddlers to teenagers and everything in between, I'll teach you how to walk through every season of motherhood with courage and creativity and come out on the other side smarter and wiser, all while creating great relationships with your kids and a home life you love. My Nana once told me, there's no way but through. Turns out she was right in life and in motherhood. So throw your hair in a messy bun, grab your coffee, and come have a seat as we talk about all things mom. This is the No Way But Through podcast. Welcome back into the No Way But Through podcast. So glad to have you back here again with me this week. This is episode nine, and I am so glad that you've been here, that you all continue to come back here week after week. I just, I feel so honored that I get to sit here and record for you and that you come back and listen. Podcasting is so new to me because I'm not a regular podcast listener at all. And so all of this world is very different to me and new to me, which is exciting, uh, but can also be a little bit scary at times. But one of the things someone pointed out to me recently um, when they sent me a message about one of my recent podcasts is that they imagined that it could be kind of hard to know how people are feeling about your podcast because there really isn't a feedback loop so much with a podcast. Um, we do have Instagram where, you know, we can connect over there at No Way But Through, but all of that is really, you know, just supportive material to what I'm doing over here. The podcast, this is kind of the main thing. And so she just said, hey, I wanted to send you this message. Um, and she just gave me some really awesome feedback. And she mentioned that it could, yeah, be hard to know um, as a podcaster how people are feeling about what you're saying unless they leave a review or they happen to reach out. And so she said, hey, I just wanted to reach out and tell you some things. That meant so much to me. And she's right. You, it really is kind of hard to know. But I see y'all coming here. I see your listens, like how many times people are listening. And I cannot believe, and it blows my mind, that it's in the thousands and thousands of listens. So thank you so much for being here each week. I'm just really honored that you would spend this time with me and that you want to learn um, from me over here. So thank you so much. So glad y'all are here. In today's episode, we're going to talk about traditions, specifically family traditions. I wanted to record this episode for you before we go into the holidays, because I think what I'm going to share with you today will be really helpful for you as you head into the holidays with your family and as you as young moms are forming your traditions as a family. It isn't lost on me that this episode is dropping on Halloween when you are going to be faced with seeing lots of people who embrace Halloween from dressing up their kids in elaborate costumes or their family dresses up in costumes. It's just, I always feel like Halloween is sort of that beginning holiday that sends us into the holiday season and it can be when we begin to wonder and question our own family traditions and the things that we're doing or not doing. You are about to be inundated for the next several months, if you aren't already, with Instagram reels and social media posts and conversations with your friends and commercials on TV and just being on the internet. And literally just from every source of information in your life, you are about to be inundated with things that you could be doing with your family over the holidays and over these next few months. I mean, it's an industry, right? People out there want your money and they want your business and they want it year after year, right? 
you are going to see lots of different families doing lots of different things. And you may be thinking, like I was when I was a young mom, I want to do the pumpkin patch and I want to do the hay rides and I want to do Christmas pajamas and elf on the shelf and take a fall trip to the beach and do Halloween costumes for my family and bake sugar cookies and decorate them and go on a train ride and go to Christmas festivals and hang Christmas lights. And y'all, there is absolutely no way for you to do all of those things. There just practically is not. It's not possible. So how do you go about choosing what to do? How do you start as young moms to build a healthy perspective around family traditions and what you want to do and be as a family? You can't do it all. Some of you are still having babies and there is just absolutely no way for you to do all of the different things that your friends are doing and that you see other families doing. That even you as a kid, that you did when you were younger. So how do you choose? How do you think about it and process it? How do you go from the beginning of holiday season with an endless number of ideas of things you want to do and get to the end of the holiday season and be able to look back and feel like you did this well with your family without regret for the things that you didn't do, but with this like bottle full of memories, good memories that you made with your kids and your family and with some established beginning traditions that you want to make your own. I will tell you that our family traditions are incredibly important to me. They always have been. They're important to my husband too and they're incredibly important to my kids as well. The things that we do that make us well, us, are very formational for our kids. Family traditions do so much inside of our kids. And I didn't know this when I first had kids. It's something I've learned as they've gotten older. And now that I have adult children, I can see with so much clarity, indeed, how important those traditions were and are to them. The outward expression of our family traditions and the fun that we have together and the actual doing of these traditions has ushered in so much joy and fun to our family. But I don't want to miss and I don't want you to miss what these traditions do inside of our kids and inside of us and to our family. So I'm going to talk about two things today. One, I just want to share with you some of the underlying reasons why we do family traditions around here and what those traditions do in our kids and to our family. Just very basic foundational things. And then I want to talk to you about some of our specific traditions and why we do them and what they do in our family and just how they've played out over the years for us specifically. What I want for you to walk away with today is a framework a framework to think about family traditions, for you to think about the things that you want to do and don't want to do, or when you have an idea and you think it's something you might want your family to begin doing, to have a framework to process that. Does this fit our family? Is this something I really want to do, or am I just doing this because somebody else is doing it? Or why does this feel so hard when it seems like it's so easy for that family over there. That's what I really want to talk to you about today. The whys behind why we do family traditions and then some of the more practical applications. So why are family traditions important? What do they do? I sat down with Jason and we talked about this before I recorded this podcast. Side note, I'm the front face of this podcast, and I'm the one who's really chatty. But I have spent over 25 years learning from Jason Short, my husband. So much of the wise and steady and fun in our family is because he's the dad and husband around here. I have learned so much from him. And so even though I'm the face you see on the front of this podcast and over on Instagram, So much of the wisdom in this podcast comes from him, and I just need you to know that. Anyway, we sat down and talked about what 
are the traditions? What are our family traditions? And what have they done in our family over the last 20 years? Here's what we came up with. Traditions bond us. They bond us as a family. They make us closer and more connected. When we're doing something all together as a family, making gingerbread houses or dressing up for Halloween or jumping in the car to go look at Christmas lights, these are things that bond us together. They don't do these things with anybody else but with us and their siblings. We laughed together sitting there just remembering years past when we were in the car with them and looking at Christmas lights and or picking out gingerbread houses or putting on our Halloween costumes. And all of those memories just come flooding back each year. And there is nobody else that knows the insides of our family traditions like the seven of us together. It's always been us. Even when we've invited other people in to do things with us, which as I've talked about in other episodes of the podcast, we've always invited people in to do different things with us. But our family traditions, they bond us as a family and they are unique experiences that only the seven of us have shared together and that really has connected and bonded us. Family traditions also create a sense of grounding and stability for our kids. They spend so much time anticipating the family traditions that we do together. We've learned that now over the years, now that we have older kids, because they will say to us, hey, are we going to carve pumpkins this year? You didn't forget, did you? (laughs) They're thinking about these things before the time even arrives. And just that sense of grounding and stability that traditions provide is so important to kids. It helps anchor them at home and anchor them to something more important than themselves as individuals. Just like being on sports teams, being part of a family and doing these traditions together It creates a team mentality and it allows them to be part of something bigger than themselves. And it's just so important for young kids and older kids to know and experience that. We really see this in the negative when we skip a tradition, like something that we've done year after year and for whatever reason, we can't do it a particular year or we don't do it or mom's overwhelmed and didn't get her crap together. We see how much this affects them when we skip something that we always do as a family. One of the most healthy things for kids is creating a good memory structure for them and giving them stability within a family. Those repeated memories are so powerful for kids. And if your kids are a little bit older, then you know this already. You hear them talk with each other and with you. Like, are we going to do this? We always do this, right? We do see this in the negative if we skip something and just the disappointment that they feel and the letdown that they feel. So how do you go about choosing what's right for your family? If you've been listening to this podcast over the last few weeks, then you know that I'm not going to tell you which traditions to do and not to do. Those things are so personal to you and to your family, and some of them you are bringing from your own childhood, and some of them are compromises you and your husband are making. But I think hearing stories of moms who've gone before you and seeing how they do things can be really helpful in giving you the framework to process your own decision making as it relates to family traditions. Not so much around the actual traditions we do over here, but in the processing of it in you choosing what's best for your family. That's what I want you to take away from this podcast today. There is one particular thing that I've already talked about on here before, but that is an absolutely essential piece to developing meaningful family traditions. And that is eating dinner together around the table. Why is that so important? Well, if you didn't listen yet to episode four, then that episode unpacks this in detail. 
But here is why eating dinner around the table is so important and impacts so many other aspects of your life, including your family traditions. You cannot expect your kids to be bonded and for each other and close and connected on vacations or on Christmas morning or out to dinner or making gingerbread houses or doing anything else you're doing as a family if they are not bonding day after day at home. There is not some magical fairy dust that falls from the sky when you go to create a special memory with them or you take them somewhere special or you start a family tradition. Nothing all of a sudden happens that creates a closeness and a bonding and a fun atmosphere for your kids to do something together. If they aren't living this out day after day around your table and inside your home, then you cannot expect that essential and important element to be there when fun walks in the door. Let me give you an example of this. Let's say you want to take your family out to the local steakhouse at Christmas time. We actually have an incredible local steakhouse here in Raleigh that you can't even get reservations like six months before Christmas to get in there. You pretty much have to have reservations like a year in advance. But it's decorated for Christmas and it's incredible and amazing. And I mean, the decorations in there are like next level. One of my good friends, she actually helps decorate every year, and the work that goes into just making this steakhouse amazing for Christmas is just unreal. But it's so worth it because this place is awesome. So let's say you decide, because you've seen lots of other families doing this, which I definitely have, you decide you want to get dressed up and take your family with your kids to the steakhouse at Christmas time. You walk into the restaurant and the kids are squabbling and everybody's dressed up and itchy and you get to the table and everyone's fidgety and annoying and irritated and uncomfortable, especially dad, and the kids aren't sitting and everything's just, it just all feels really hard. You wanted a special night out and everyone freaked out and you spent all of this money and it was the opposite of what you'd imagined. Now, you and your husband are in a fight because, well, it's clearly his fault, right? (laughs) Here's the thing. It was good for you to want to do this, to start traditions and find what works for your family. But you can't expect your kids to go out to a fancy Christmas dinner at the local steakhouse and love it and get along and enjoy one another and enjoy being with you as their parents if you aren't eating together and practicing this as a family every day. You're spending all of this money and the kids are uncomfortable and squirmy and it isn't what you imagined and you end up super let down because this didn't look like you imagined it would look. I get this. This has happened to us with multiple different things over the years, especially when I was a young mom and I was learning this. It's that whole trying to fit a square peg into a round hole thing. It ends up just not working. There is nothing wrong with wanting to take your family out to dinner for Christmas. In fact, lots of people do this and have a great time. But like I talked about in episode four about gathering around the table, you cannot expect your kids to know how to do something you have not taught them to do. If you aren't regularly practicing sitting around the table and what that looks like and having conversations about each other's day and bonding as a family around the dinner table over and over again during the week and at home, then when you walk into a fancy Christmas steakhouse, your kids are not going to know what to do. Being upset with them for misbehaving or for their manners or for not providing you as a parent with the experience you wanted for yourself and for your family isn't really fair. Everyone will leave disappointed. Am I telling you that you shouldn't go out to dinner around Christmas time with your family? Of course not. Am I telling you that you should? 
No, I'm not telling you that either. I'm also a pretty seasoned mom. And I know that sometimes families just have a bad day or they have a bad night. And even if you've been eating dinner around the table for a long time and you've established good connection at the table, that you can go out to dinner and it be an absolute disaster for seemingly no reason at all. This has happened to us more times than I can count. But what I want to communicate with you today around this is that the training that happens at home and the regular repetition of doing things together as a family day by day when there isn't something particularly special involved, that's what makes family traditions work and what makes them meaningful. They are meaningful because of the connection you share as a family and enjoying experiences with each other. This is why I always encourage the young moms that I mentor to include their really little kids in everything they're doing as a family. Don't leave your little ones behind on vacations or on special outings or on fun traditions that you're creating because they are watching Even if they are too young to remember a specific event, they are watching and they are being formed and molded by watching their older siblings and you as their parents enjoy and create these traditions together. Family culture is built. It's built over time in small, everyday investments that you make in and with each other. Traditions then reinforce your family culture. They illuminate what's already there and create these amazing, special, and extraordinary moments that you will remember for years to come. Before I recorded this podcast, I went to my oldest son, Jack, and I asked him, what are our family traditions that mean most to you? I hardly had finished the question before he blurted out, family dinner, no question. You cannot expect to have bonded kids and meaning family times together doing anything at all if you aren't practicing this and modeling this and teaching them throughout the entire year. And one of the very best ways that you can do this is to prioritize family dinner together. This is the best training ground for building your family culture that will express itself in your chosen traditions. If you want to have successful, big family traditions, then you need to have consistent, small family traditions all throughout the year. Okay, so let's talk about now choosing specific traditions. So you're seeing all of these things that people are doing, your friends are doing around any given holiday or vacations that they take or things that their family rallies around and you want to start to build that in your own family. Likely, you already have some framework for this. You've already, you already have things that you've started to do. You go apple picking, or you go to the pumpkin patch, or you pick out matching Christmas PJs, or you have a favorite vacation spot, and you've kind of already started to develop some things that are unique to your family and that you all do together and love. How do you know which one should stick and you should continue doing year after year? Or what do you let go of and stop doing? How do you know how to sift through all the things you see others doing or things posted online and choose traditions that will actually be meaningful to your family? Here are some things that I think will help you as you ponder and process that. Number one, FOMO is a tradition killer. FOMO meaning fear of missing out. Thinking you are missing out because you are not doing all of the things that other people are doing will absolutely keep you from establishing traditions that actually fit your family and are perfect for you and your kids. Let me give you an example in recent years of how this worked over here in my family. So I told you that I talked to my oldest son before I recorded this podcast, and I actually went to all of my kids then and asked them what their favorite traditions are that we've ever done. My oldest son, Jack, said family dinner, and then his second one 
was that we read the Jesus Storybook Bible in December and on Christmas morning every year. We actually read it throughout the whole month and leading up to Christmas, and I use it as sort of an Advent celebration of sorts in anticipation of Christmas Day. When we get up on Christmas morning, before we even come downstairs and open gifts, we all climb into our bed, and Jason reads the Christmas story from the Jesus Storybook Bible. We actually really, really love Sally Lloyd-Jones, and we just absolutely love the Jesus Storybook Bible, and we have been using it literally since the year it came out, which I believe was maybe 2007, right around there. Several years ago, a bunch of our friends and community and even our church started using something called Advent Blocks. It's a way of celebrating Advent, and it's a set of blocks that you can get and some material that goes with it. I actually don't know a whole lot about it, but I did see lots of my friends using it, and I think it was even developed, at least in part, by people that go to my church. I began to see these blocks everywhere on social media and friends posting about them, and I believe it was maybe last year or year before my church started using them, and you could purchase them through our church as well. Well, we had already established our Advent tradition. We had been using the Jesus Storybook Bible to read and lead up to Christmas and then use it Christmas morning for 15 years. This is our family tradition. This is something we love, as Jack mentioned, and something we do. And it developed very organically when Jack and Max were really little. And it could have been really tempting for me as a mom in seeing other friends do this and even my church doing this to kind of forego and put aside what we had already been doing for Advent and embrace something new simply because I wanted to feel part of what I saw lots of people in my community doing. Would that have been wrong or unwise or anything like that? No, of course not. It's just that the reason I would have been doing it would have been FOMO. It would have been that I didn't want to miss out on something else that I was seeing people do instead of continuing our meaningful tradition that we've already established, right? And I will tell you that adding new and even good things in over time for the wrong reasons can create so much pressure around traditions and can feel so hard. So I've just never done Advent blocks and I've been a mom long enough and a parent long enough to know that a lot of times the best thing to do in a situation like this is just to let it go, to not feel like I need to be doing the same things other people are doing, even if it's good and even if it's valuable, but to just stay on course with the traditions that we've organically developed as a family that are also good and not add something else to my already full holiday plate. I don't need yet another thing to do over the holidays. And as young moms, you don't either. I could have used any number of examples here because this is true about Elf on the Shelf or baking sugar cookies and decorating them or Christmas parades or anything else as it relates to Christmas or holidays and what you see other people doing. Don't feel pressured by thinking you might miss out if you aren't doing something other people are doing. So many of our traditions as a family have developed over time and very organically because they worked specifically well for our family. And what works for another family and is good for them might not be the best thing for us. And like I've said many times before already on this podcast, that is okay. It's actually good. We're all different and that is good. So don't let fear of missing out, fear of not being included in something others are doing or because there's this new thing out that you think you might want to do. Don't let FOMO, fear of missing out, be a force behind why you start a new tradition. Number two, think about choosing one or two things in any particular season and let the rest go. You cannot do it all. You cannot even do all the things you want to do and think might be fun for your family, right? 
You are not less of a mom because you are not doing all of the different things that everyone else is doing. And you're not less of a mom because you aren't doing all of the things you've saved in a Pinterest folder or saved on Instagram. Pick one thing or two things that you absolutely want to prioritize and do and then make those happen. Let me just give you an example of how that's played out in my family. There is so much you can do around Christmas, right? Like I've mentioned already, there's Elf on the Shelf and Christmas PJs and cookies and gingerbread houses and looking at Christmas lights and train rides and going to the mountains and snow tubing and going to Christmas festivals. And the list is literally endless. I am exhausted just sitting here listing those few things. So here's what I've done, and I am going to highly recommend this to you. Pick one thing and make it happen. There is one thing, one family tradition we do at Christmas that is really important to me, like really, really important to me, and that is our Polar Express party. We have been watching Polar Express with friends and our little ones and babies since Jack was a toddler which means it's been almost 20 years. If nothing else gets done at Christmas, if we do nothing else, we do this. I go out and I buy bells for all the kids that come to our house. And we print tickets and we punch them during the movie with a hole punch, just like Tom Hanks does on the train. We wear snuggly pajamas and we all snuggle up together in our family room and I bake our favorite cookies and we make hot chocolate and we pause the movie when Tom Hanks hands out hot chocolate to all the kids on the train and we make hot chocolate for our kids right then and there. I have to run out and get hot chocolate supplies and make sure people's pajamas are cleaned and I find a night on our December calendar before November even is even halfway through to make sure that we have a night that we can all watch the Polar Express together as a family and invite some friends to do that with us. Then I collapse that night and I'm like, okay, I'm good. Is it Christmas day yet? This tradition is so important to me and I love it so much and my kids love it. And if we didn't do that one year, my kids would stage a mutiny. It's important to us. It's tradition. Do we have other traditions that we do around Christmas? Of course. Sometimes we get them done and sometimes we don't. I mentioned the Jesus Storybook Bible. We, we do that every single year. But there are years that we've been better about it than others in reading together as a family leading up into Christmas. Christmas morning, always. But this Polar Express night, this is sacred around here. It's us. I'm sitting here thinking of all the faces of people who have come to our party over the years. So many different families that we love so much. But do we decorate sugar cookies together? No. Have my kids ever ridden a Christmas train? Nope. Have we ever been snow tubing? No. Do I give my kids a sentimental ornament every year? Nope, never have. Do we do a cookie exchange with anyone? Nope. Have we ever watched any Hallmark movies? Nope. I've never even seen one. Do we own any nutcrackers? Nope. I have a friend who collects those. Do we have any? Nope. Do we go to a steakhouse and out for a fancy dinner around Christmas time? Nope. We don't. There are so many things we don't do. And the things that we don't do give space for the things we do. The one non-negotiable is Polar Express Night. And if we don't do anything else in December, we're going to do that. So what I want to encourage you with today is maybe pick one thing. Just pick one thing that you want to do with your kids for Christmas this year. One tradition. One thing that you love as a mom that helps you express your creativity and you want to be all in with it and you want to spoil your kids with it and maybe use it as a way to invite people in. Choose one thing to bond your family. Start a tradition and make it yours. But don't run yourself ragged trying to do all the things for the holidays this year. 
Just pick one or two. And don't let envy or FOMO in. And don't allow outside pressure to make you feel like you have to do things a certain way or you need to be doing all of these things and different activities because you don't. You are not less of a mom if you don't do them all. Pick something, make it awesome, love your family with it, and let the rest go. And lastly, number three, allow your traditions to develop organically. What do I mean by this? Well, there are going to be things that your family is going to want to do together or that you as a mom are going to want to do with your kids because you did them as a child or because your husband did them as a child or because they just fit your family. I want to encourage you to embrace those traditions because the list of things you can do is so long, you do have to choose, right? You don't have time or energy or anything else to do them all. So think about what makes your family your family. What did you dream about doing with kids if you had kids one day? What are the things that you just loved as a child and you want to pass those on to your kids? Do those things. Your kids will catch your passion. They will. Going back to the Polar Express thing, if I decided that we were going to sit down and watch 25 days of Hallmark movies in December, my people would revolt and look at me like I was insane. Why? Because it just doesn't fit us. We have four boys around here and they have zero interest in watching Hallmark Christmas movies. Would I love Hallmark movies? Probably. My friend Morgan tells me I would absolutely love them. And every year she's wanting to get me over to her house in PJs to watch movies with her. I know I'd love it. But for my family, it just doesn't fit. It's never something I grew up doing. And if we tried to implement that now or even in years past, it it just wouldn't have worked. Think about the things that you want to do with your kids. Things that you would want to do year after year and pour your creativity and your heart and your passion and your time into those things to make them special for your kids. They will catch this. They will catch your excitement and your passion about it. And when these things are repeated year after year, it will become something that bonds you as a family and something that they look forward to and anticipate in the months leading up to doing that thing. This isn't just true about Christmas. This is true for any season of the year in any traditions you want to develop. Let me give you one more example before we close out here. About 10 years ago, we wanted to go on a beach vacation with our family. I love the beach. I grew up going to the beach every single summer. But the beach that we went to in Maryland was quite a drive away from where we live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we knew that there were some amazing beaches here. I remember seeing my friend Helen post on Facebook about the Outer Banks and how much they love the Outer Banks as a family. She has three boys, just a little older than my boys, and I have four boys. And it just seemed like from their pictures that this could be something our family would really enjoy. So I reached out to her and asked her who she used to book the trip and plan it. And we wrote back and forth for a while about details. And I ended up booking a trip to the Outer Banks almost on a whim. Helen was literally the only person I knew that went to the Outer Banks at that time, and it actually wasn't the closest beach to us here in Raleigh, but her family absolutely loved it, and I was like, let's go. That trip has now become a family tradition for us. My kids love the Outer Banks. Our family loves the Outer Banks. We have a decade of memories that we've made in the Outer Banks together. This family tradition for us was developed from me seeing a Facebook post and reaching out to my friend Helen and then doing some research and then booking Outer Banks for a one-time trip that we were going to take in the fall one year while my kids were all on break. And it naturally and organically turned into something that has bonded our family and I think will for years to come. 
Jason and I have already talked about this with our older boys, but we plan on taking our kids and our grandkids to the Outer Banks every year going forward. I cannot wait to have a huge beach house filled with my sons and their wives and my grandbabies. And well, Holly will still be 10, right? She's not going to grow up, right? (laughs) But I cannot wait for that. I cannot wait for that beach house to be filled with my adult children and their children. This tradition that we have come to love so, so much, developed so naturally and almost on accident. And we kept going to the Outer Banks year after year because it just became familiar and the kids asked to kept to keep going back. And in time, it just became us. So as a mom, as you are making plans with your kids and you're trying things out and some things work and some things might be awesome and feel like, yes, this is us. Those are the things that I would encourage you to repeat and to continue to do and pour yourself into and mark on your calendar and make intentional time for. These will become your family traditions over time. The ones that don't work, the stuff your friends are doing that you tried and it was a disaster and just didn't work for you or you just don't feel like fit your family, let them go. The very best things we do as a family over here at the Shorts and the things that make us us are the things that developed very naturally and the things that we tried to force, they never worked. I learned in time to let go of FOMO and I got better at determining what was going to work and what wasn't. And you will too. You will get better at this as time goes on and you begin to establish your own family traditions and you learn the types of things that work for your family and that you really love and enjoy and the things that don't. What I want you to take from this podcast today is really just, it's two things. If you only remember two things from this podcast, these are it. I want you to think very foundationally about what your daily life looks like as a family and how you are creating a bonding culture with your kids every day in the little things, in the simple everyday interactions you have with your kids and the family time that you spend together and particularly around the table. Like I said in episode four, if dinner isn't possible, then find time when you can gather around the table as a family talking and sharing and bonding with one another. That daily practice, those daily investments of time will set the foundation for you to have the special family traditions that are then built around special occasions and that are life-giving and memorable and bonding for your family. The other thing I want you to take from this podcast is to let go of a lot of the noise and the things you see other people doing throughout the year that guilt is putting on you. I don't mean like with my friend Helen, looking at somebody and watching them do something and thinking that tradition might be a good tradition for your family. That can be really good and helpful and learning from our friends and getting new ideas from friends is super helpful in our lives as moms. It is never too early or too late to start a family tradition and to build a family life in a culture that you love. But I want you to let go of the things that you feel like you're doing out of FOMO or out of pressure or out of guilt and work on creating family traditions that are life-giving to you and that you love. Your family traditions, they will become so special to your kids And they will become immensely meaningful to you as a mom as your kids get older. I hope this framework gives you some ways to think about how to choose what works for your family, especially as we head into the busyness of the holidays and everyone is doing all the things and you want to find meaning and joy in the special things you do as a family. 
I want you to be able to establish your own family traditions and choose them because they're right for your family, because they are special and personal to you. And I so want you to know and experience all the joy that comes from building these kinds of traditions together as a family. You just finished another episode of the No Way But Through podcast. If you want to connect with other like-minded moms, head over to the No Way But Through page on Instagram. And if you'd like to help financially support our work over here at No Way But Through, there's a link at the bottom of the description of this podcast on how you can do just that. And click follow and subscribe so that you will get alerts every time we drop a new episode.